Hey guys, Jim here. Welcome back once again. Welcome to the Insane Asylum. It is going to get just friggin' nutty in here. I want to prepare you in advance. I really, really, really like this knife. Spoiler alert. When I first saw the Magnetron being advertised on social media, I went, I have to have one of those. I started seeing them go on sale everywhere, and every time I saw it, there were two versions that just really stood out to me that I fell in love with. I don't really like the, the black PVD versions with all these different things going on all over the knife. That wasn't for me. I liked the version with the, uh, the blue accents and this one here, which is the all gray and silver. Here's the packaging. You'll get your Wii Knife sticker. This was the, was this the Arrakis, I think it was. This is one of the Elijah Isham designs. This, by the way, is not an Elijah Isham design, but they have put that sticker in every knife package I've seen for the past couple of years. Uh, you will also get like a little mini catalog of some of the new models that they have that have come out. And there's Mike's hyphen. Very, very cool. And the Snex Vision R. I'll never understand the pocket clip on that and people's fascination with it. Just not for me. What else? Uh, the Makani, Elementum, mm. Snick, mm. Smooth Sentinel, the Nitro Mini, by the way. That's really, really cool. Okay, so that's your packaging. Nice, soft, suede-like microfiber cloth. And then your zippered case on the inside. Once you get this open, the party starts. Oh. Mmm, take a look at the work on the frame. So they have counterboard deep down into the frame. So you had three holes, three lightning holes, what would normally be lightning holes or speed holes. And then they've dished each of them out. That was the thing that I really, really loved. The carbon fiber is a little rough around those areas. Sometimes that can be helped and sometimes it can't. Especially with this because you could tell all they've done is they've taken like a, uh, just another type of, of end mill and just gone in there and zip, zip, zip. And they didn't have a finishing pass that went around and cleaned everything up because they were just going for like a, just a radial satin look on the titanium. And I think if they had done anything to really clean up the carbon fiber more, they would have ended up with mirror polished. And they're almost mirror polished, but mirror polished dishes instead. Then we have the dimpled pivot with a titanium pivot collar, and that is on both sides. And then my favorite part overall is the, ugh. How that thing looks. Very aggressively designed, very high end custom look to it. And with a knife that's around 360 bucks, I think you're getting a lot more in the design and the look and the fit and finish than what you're paying for. It's gonna look and almost feel the part of a custom at a full production price of 360. So what you're looking at here is a full titanium frame lock with a trailing point blade shape. And you're probably going to hear a lot of different people call that blade shape a lot of different things. And normally a trailing point is going to be a little bit longer past the belly, going down, trailing down to that tip. But this really is a trailing point tip, a trailing point uh, blade shape, I should say. And it's done so, so well. And with the grind as high as it is, it is nice and thin behind the edge, crazy sharp, definitely a good cutter. The action, as you would expect from Wii Knives at this point, is stellar. It's fantastic. It took me a long time to get my hands on this knife. I've been anxiously awaiting the day that I could get this knife in my hands and sit down and do the review and get it out here for you guys. And... I fell so much in love with it that I've sat on it for a few days before doing the review, just admiring it, playing with it, cutting with it, carrying it, and just thoroughly enjoying every aspect of this knife. From the, 
the design language, the beauty of it, admiring that, to carrying it, having that uh, really great carryability from this knife, good weight, good thickness, to just flicking it and playing with it and feeling the action. There's going to be a lot of stuff to talk about here, so let's get into the TLDW. Too long, didn't watch. For those that just don't have enough time to watch an entire review video, even though you clicked on a review video, here's the highline stuff. Pros and cons. Pros for me initially, the ergonomics, the way this feels in the hand. And it's surprisingly compact for the actual dimensions. And when I read off the specs later on, you're going to go, no way. There's no way the knife is that big. There's no way the blade is that big. There is some visual trickery afoot here, and I'm not sure exactly what you can credit to that. I don't know if it's because of the shape of the blade. I don't know what it is, but this knife is actually on paper a lot larger than it seems. So I'll tell you this, if you've come across this knife and you've looked at it on websites and went, I just don't buy knives that big, don't be afraid of it. This is going to carry like a somewhat smaller knife in every regard. The weight, the overall size of it in the pocket, the handle length, the, the thickness, the height, the blade, everything. It's just going to feel a little bit more compact than it really is. Another pro is the micro milling done in the titanium. Nice clean milling for a really good looking pattern throughout. I really, really love the carbon fiber that they chose to use. It's got a very distinct pattern, very much like a, uh, a raindrop Damascus pattern. They're calling it rose carbon fiber. When I used it on my Caladin design, um, I went with raindrop carbon fiber because it looks like a raindrop Damascus. And if there was an option for this in raindrop like uh, Chad Nichols stainless raindrop Damascus, this would look really, really good up against that. Uh, another pro, the backspacer. Nicely detailed. I'll just, I'll just say this. I'll generalize it to the detail work because it's not just in the backspacer. The backspacer is one part of it. The way that they have shaped and crafted this pocket clip is another Having the pivot collars and the dimpled pivot is another. I think that they did so much with this knife for the price that it's crazy. I like the uh, the three divots there in the uh, the backspacer. It almost makes the knife look like it was it could have been an uh, integral. I mean, if, if if this had actually been full length, you'd be like, wow, is that an integral or not? And then the way they chose to do the lanyard opening is brilliant. Very, very, very well done. I actually have a couple of knives that I've designed that are very similar to this way of thinking. I'm going to change them up a little bit now because I don't want somebody thinking, oh, he copied the Gravitron. Because the Gravitron is, oh, sorry, did I, say, did I say Gravitron? Magnetron. My, my apologies. Gravitron was that crazy... Uh, ride from the uh, the fair that we used to go on um the magnetron so as popular as it is i don't want to have anything that looks too similar to anybody else's but i love the way that that's done and if you're tying your own lanyards this is a really really easy way to do that you're just going to run one end through it's going to push out to the other you pull that out then you go ahead and tie it on and put your lanyard bead on and all that kind of good stuff Another thing that I, I have come to appreciate on this is the, the concave in the spine of the blade with the jimping perfectly machined. It's really, really grippy and grabby, but it's not crazy sharp. It's not a finger shredder. It's very, very comfortable. And if you want to choke up, the ergonomics with that forward finger choil allow you to do that. So this is going to be really good for small precision cutting and, uh, and scraping and stuff like that. This is going to be a very comfortable knife to use. Ergonomics, design, the details, all those are big, big pros. Uh, now to the cons. For me personally, there really are no cons, but I think 
speaking in more broad terms about how most people are going to feel about this knife, uh, one con for them might be the slightly rougher finishing of the carbon fiber right around the speed holes. And, I mean, really, I can't think of anything else. I mean, the flipper tab is shaped perfectly. It's very easy to work, very easy to get the action going. I almost want to go back to more pros because I, I keep seeing more the more that I look at it. This might be one of the best knives that We Knives has made in the past couple of years. And they have grown tremendously in their skill set over the past three to four years. They've gone from making cool knives that were constructed well, but the designs didn't really hit for the general audience out there. Some of them are way out in left field, and people are like, that's just too weird, it's just too different, or it's too slender, or too this, or too that. And I think that they have finally settled into still being able to come up with creative and somewhat aggressive designs. However they're attractive to a broader audience these days. But their machining skill has gone up tremendously in the past three to four years. The fine-tuning of their detents, the lock bar tension, the placement of the, of the flipper tab, everything that has been calculated perfectly to give you an utterly fantastic action. And by the way, that hand rub satin, that was something that they had started to attempt to do many years ago, and they didn't quite get it right. Here, you could see what a true hand rub satin should look like. Nice, crisp transitions between the hand rub bevels and the, the vertical machine satin flats, and then that swedge trailing off toward the tip. That's the level of finish work that you would expect on a $1,000 custom. And it's only been a couple of years that these production factories have been able to do really good hand rub satins. And this is as perfect as they come. Beautifully, beautifully done. I think this is overall one of the most impressive knives that We Knives has ever made. I feel extraordinarily lucky to have it and to be able to share it with you. I know that I am far from the first person to have reviewed this knife. A lot of people have gotten their hands on them. And I'm pretty sure everybody's got to be just about as impressed as I am. I haven't watched anybody else's reviews, so I couldn't really tell you. But overall, I love the aesthetics of it. I love the little details. I love the, the adventures that they took in the designing. Oh, let's, let's put some speed holes in it. Let's, let's counter bore them and get a nice bowl dish, dish bowl going on there and polish them up a little bit, make it a little bit different. And when they do the blue Anno version, it really pops. It looks really, really, really good. And as much as I thought that was going to be my favorite, that was the one that I initially wanted the most, I like that this one over time is it's just it's got it's a more subtle look and I think over time I'll appreciate that more because there are sometimes we'll buy a really wild version of a knife instead of a plain Jane version or a somewhat more subtle version because it pulled at us immediately we went holy shit that looks cool I need to get that and then over time we're like eh that's the thing that I like the least about it now is the, the flashy anodizing or the crazy pocket clip or whatever it was that was so extraordinary that you were drawn to that particular version. I think that this one will blend into more collections a lot more easily. It's not quite as flashy. It's not as crazy. I mean, they've got one that's all black and then it has like the, uh, the, the copper foil carbon fiber, and then they've done gold anodizing accents. 
And I just felt like that was way too much shit coming at you all at once on one knife. I wasn't a fan of it. I really like this version a lot. So them's my thoughts on the bad boy. Hey guys, sorry for the interruption, but I promise I will make this very, very brief. I want to thank those of you that have joined and become channel members. You are helping to support the channel and helping to continue the growth. And if you've been considering supporting the channel in any way, shape, or form, because I do not have channel sponsors, uh, I don't show anybody's products, I don't get paid for anything, I don't do affiliate links, so everything is completely self-funded. If you'd like to help out and watch the channel grow and get more great content coming your way, please do consider becoming a member. Now we're going to make our way into the specs, and this is important because, as I mentioned, on paper, it sounds like a really crazy big knife, but it doesn't play that way, either visually or in the hand, the way that it feels. It's crazy. So very quickly, here are the specs. You can pause your screen and uh, let that soak in and, and read them at your leisure. But 8.61 inches overall length with a three and three quarter inch blade. That's big. It just doesn't play that big. So... Yeah, I mean, we're here in M390, I'm sorry, 20CV, which is M390, as we do on many knives. We knives made the switch over to 20CV a year or two ago, and pretty much everything that they offer in a, in a mono steel, not a uh, Damascus, is going to be in 20CV. Great finishing work on it, and the blade stock thickness of 160 thousandths of an inch thick. It's beefy without being overdone, and it certainly does not feel too thin that it's delicate. It's a really good balance that they struck there. 